Hello, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kurt, and welcome back to Far Lands or Bust. I hear footsteps once again, the footsteps, this time on sand. I hope we're all right. I hope indeed. Let's, uh, let's make a break for it. Oh, break for it! We appear to be fine, but oh, mm, those creepers, <laughs> creeper house, <laughs> woof, all right, Wolfie, let's get going, away from the creepers and west in Far Lands or Bust in episode 344, woof, indeed, it is Friday, April 18th, 2014, and as mentioned, we are continuing, <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Woo! All right, let me try that again. We are continuing to walk to the Far Lands here in Minecraft Beta 1.7.3, and we are continuing to raise money for Child's Play charity. This the fifth season. We reset the uh, the amount we had raised, and we are now up to one thousand. Hello, ocean sheep. One thousand three hundred eight dollars and sixteen cents going towards directly to Child's Play Charity. They get toys, books, and games to kids in hospitals around the world. You can learn more at childsplaycharity.org. But yeah, I do appreciate the continued donations for that. Helping, uh, I suppose, motivate old Kurt J. Mack on his three-year-old journey westward towards the Far Lands. Keeping it keeping it fresh keeping it keeping it real <laughs> no, I don't know uh, but yeah we are we are continuing onwards um I don't really have any I was gonna clear up my inventory but I don't have any uh, thing for which to clear who so yeah far lands of bust here we are I don't really watch out Wolfie Whoop. <laughs> accidentally took out my pickaxe I don't really have any uh Normally I have some sort of story or anecdote <laughs> or, or something for which to speak of, but uh, not, not much right now. I mean, I do have some space news in that, and a lot of people were mentioning this on Twitter and whatnot, but talk a lot about space news, and the big space news, yesterday it was announced that there was a new Earth-sized planet exoplanet found within its star's habitable zone. And this was discovered by the Kepler Space Telescope. Kepler is one of the telescopes that looks at a very specific portion of the sky in Cygnus, specifically. Uh, it looks at something like 180,000 stars at once, and it watches those stars for periodic changes in their brightness, and that would indicate that a planet is passing in front of that star and, and blocking the light. Pretty much a transit, much like Venus transited our sun a couple years ago. Or was that last year? No, it was a couple years ago. And uh, you can measure that even at the distance of exoplanets, other stars. A very slight percentage difference in the amount of light coming from those stars. And if that's periodic enough and, and uh, you know, regular enough, then it indicates that there is indeed a planet. And uh, it, it discovered, they recently announced that the the very uh, easy to remember name of Kepler 186F was discovered. F is generally, the star itself is Kepler 186A. That's how you name the star. And then B, C, D, E, and F are each of the planets. So there's multiple planets, but way too close to this star. This is a, a red dwarf, so a, a, a star much smaller than our own sun. Uh, but F has been discovered, and it is actually 1.1 times the size of Earth. And it has a 130 day year, so it takes 130 Earth days to orbit its star. And it orbits at a distance of 53 million kilometers. For comparison, Mercury orbits our own sun at 50 million kilometers. But you have to take into account this red dwarf is much smaller, much less, uh, not so hot. So that actually is that star's habitable zone. Of course, the the habitable zone of any star is kind of a, 
a wide range. It doesn't necessarily mean that, yes, this planet has life on it because it is within the habitable zone for, for, uh, ow! For comparison, both Venus and Mars are within our own sun's habitable zones, and perhaps at some point they were habitable, but Venus is too close and has a runaway greenhouse gas effect, and Mars is too far and doesn't have much of an atmosphere, so there's not much going on in Mars. Perhaps at one time there was, but uh, but we, we happen to be at just the right point, at least. Something is burning over here. Zombles! Many zombles are burning! What's up with this, Wolfie? Do you think maybe there's a... Don't go down there. Don't go down there. There's a uh, spawner down there, perhaps? Have a seat. We shall investigate. Speaking of habitable zones... Oops. Whoa! That bounced right back at me. Alright, let's check this out. Nope, it's just a, a dark alley. That's a shame. Uh, so yeah, this is uh, exciting news. Um, we have... We have about 1,800 confirmed exoplanets. 1,100 of those coming f directly from the Kepler uh, mission. And uh, of those, 53 are within that star's habitable zone. And the majority of them are much, much larger than Earth. They are usually gas giants. Um, so getting this news that this one is only 1.1 times the size just slightly larger than Earth is 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 new news. It's new news! So that's very cool stuff. Of course, we don't know anything about the planet beyond its orbit and its size. We don't know anything about its mass. It could be... it could be... it could be a gas... a gaseous star... Uh, a planet. Of course, for a planet that size, they're generally, historically and uh, looking statistically speaking, uh, a planet the size of Earth generally aren't aren't gas stars or uh, planets. Excuse me, gas stars. Um, it, it's more than likely that it's a rocky planet, but we don't know if it has an atmosphere. We don't know its temperature. So, and that's mostly due to the fact that it is around a red dwarf. The star is so dim that we can't get this extra information with the current instruments. Of course, we're building instruments. The extremely large telescope. Uh, in Chile, it's, it has some crazy, like, 50-meter objective lens or something like that, 30 meters. And uh, with that, whenever uh, it finishes getting built, it supposedly should be able to image exoplanets. Which would be crazy, but, uh, but yeah, it's exciting news. So yeah, there's maybe a, a handful of planets that are about what you could compare to Earth-sized within the, the habitable zone of the star. Uh, but, uh, but it's very interesting news. Very interesting news indeed. In space news. Space news. <laughs> I, I don't know. There's no theme song for space news. Oh, random piece of sand. No, thank you. Uh, so yeah, that's very cool news. And of course, following up as the past three episodes, today, Friday, is the attempt in a couple hours. It's The attempt will have gone and passed, so either the rocket launched or it did not by the time this episode gets up, but uh, at 2, or I'm sorry, 3.25 p.m. Eastern Time is when the SpaceX uh, rocket with the Dragon capsule is to launch. This is its, uh, its next attempt after the scrub on Monday, so I'll be I'll be checking that out, I suppose, while while this episode is rendering or uploading. But yeah, it's it's Friday. I don't know, fan, fan Friday? Can we call it that, perhaps? I don't know. Uh, so I do have quite a few with all these very generous donations to Child's Play Charity. You can leave a comment, and I will try to get to those comments, questions, topics, whatnot for me to talk about. Um, I suppose I should hang around here and make an elevated hidey hole before I, before I go on a boat trip. Boat trip. Woof. Well, if he likes a boat trip, boat trip. Do 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 boat trip. <laughs> So let's do that, and then we will uh, get to answering a bunch of these questions in the morning. Darkness. I need darkness. There we go. Oh, one more darkness. In the morning. Did it do it? It did it. <laughs> And a 
space newsness. Spelunk. Oh, I was gonna do boating. What am I doing? Boat trip. Boat trip. Oh, oh, I suppose. Hey, kind of a mini segue. Um, I talked about the transit, transit of Venus. I actually traveled to Arizona to Kitt Peak Observatory outside of Tucson to observe their event for the transit of Venus, which was very cool. And Dubois asks, <laughs> I want to visit Kitt Peak. Is there anything in particular you can share or suggest? Uh, I suppose all the information... Gah, Wolfie, where are you at? Okay, there he is. Uh, I suppose all the information would be on their website, but I would go for an actual event. I mean, they're open to visitors and whatnot, but uh, go for an actual event. I'm sure they probably had an event for the lunar eclipse, so look forward to perhaps future lunar eclipse eye. Um, it is a active scientific laboratory, so it's not like a public place, especially at night, their nighttime programs tend to just run into an hour after dusk and then you have to leave because the actual scientists need to use the actual professional telescopes to get actual science done. Um, but like like the uh, the transit event was, was pretty cool and uh, was open to the public. Obviously that was during the day. I didn't stick around for the nighttime program. Uh, it is a bit of a drive outside of Tucson, and you do drive up a mountain, which is, uh, so, you know, it's a windy, thin road going up. Going down's a little bit more scary, especially after the sun has set. Um, so I suppose be prepared for that. It's much colder up there, but, but yeah, just, I suppose just, I'm, I'm not, no, I ain't no spokesman for Kit Peak. Uh, I'm not, uh, you know, I don't have any affiliations with them or whatnot, but just check the website. I would, like I said, check for events public events. Uh, otherwise, they just are open to the public and you can kind of tour the areas during the day, but uh, the sunsets up there are amazing. And of course, even more amazing when I was watching the sunset whilst Venus was in front of the sun, so that was kind of cool, but, uh, but yeah. Highly recommended. Highly recommended indeed. Um, let's see. What major developments in space exploration will be that will have been achieved by the end of your lifetime from an army of Jedi. Look at that little lonely, lonely flower on the wall there. Very poetic. Let's go this way. Um, I have no idea. I could tell you what I hope. I mean, it would be cool if we had humans on the surface of Mars. It's I'm not sure. <laughs> you know, it's a little bit back and forth whether or not that's going to happen uh, within my own personal lifetime. At, you know, a few decades ago, I would have said it would be my generation. Somebody my age would be the first person to set foot on Mars. But now it's looking like perhaps, perhaps somebody who has recently just been born or perhaps is in uh, primary school right now might be the generation to be chosen to uh, first set foot on Mars. I don't know. Um, certainly, the there's this new uh, class of astronaut candidates. Uh, they've all been are up on Twitter and they're going through their training and stuff. And it's really cool to see them. You know, oh, first time I'm putting on the spacesuit, or they do their uh, survival training. They all do survival training in case they. They return to Earth and land in a non-nominal place and, and need to survive for a while before being recovered and whatnot. Uh, so it's very cool following them. I suppose that class, you know, generally when you're chosen to be an astronaut, you go through astronaut training and class. You generally don't go to space for another 10 years or so. So it's generally, it's generally people who start going to space together are the same, from the same astronaut class. So they all kind of have a camaraderie and they all know each other, but it's generally about, you know, five, ten years after they're actually chosen to be astronauts. Uh, so it's possible the current generation of astronaut candidates are going to be the ones chosen to either, if the, the, the capture an asteroid mission is still the mission of the hour in the next ten years for NASA, perhaps that'll be these people. 
Um, there, there's in the next year we have a few astronauts who have been chosen to spend uh, one year on the International Space Station to really test the long-term effects of long-term space flight, which is a new thing. It's recently, you know, the maximum term, I suppose you could say, on, on the International Space Station is six months or so. Uh, so that's uh, that's interesting stuff. So, uh, so yeah, it's, it's hard to say as far as, like, manned space exploration. I would certainly hope we put more focus on, you know, there's a lot of focus on Mars. It's, it's a, it's a very... Hello, Lonely Water. It's a very uh, easy to sell thing for the general public going to Mars and whatnot. You know, I would hope, like I mentioned before, missions to Europa, Enceladus. You know, there's always all these mission uh, um, proposals about like drilling through the ice and into the liquid water ocean of of these 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 moons around Jupiter and and Saturn would be very cool. And then having some sort of submersible going around the oceans of, of, you know, and perhaps there's life down there, microbial life that they can detect or whatever would be really cool. Um, so yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. Obviously, we're, we already know that we're going to see Pluto up close with the New Horizons spacecraft. Uh, so Pluto is going to be imaged. I would like to see, you know, we have Cassini around Saturn for the longest time. I would like to see similar, like, scientific probes and satellites around pretty much all all of the the planets because we really don't know that much about Neptune or Uranus so it'd be really cool to have you know studying those those uh, those planets and and the surrounding moons it's just really cool at least for Cassini if you go to the website you can pretty much download and view images as they come in as the sci you know raw images from the spacecraft is really cool to see all the different stuff from uh, from Saturn. It's like, oh, this is what Saturn looked like a few hours ago. Very cool. Yeah. It's pretty cool to have that sort of direct live feed almost from the surface of Saturn or from orbit around Saturn. Very cool. Uh, so yeah, I'm not sure. It's it's kind of up in the air, and it all depends on funding, politics, of course. Now whether or not the private sector is going to step in. Who knows? It is exciting times. Exciting times indeed. Woof. Wolfie agrees. Um, from Elzroth. L L L L Zorath. <laughs> Have you ever considered redirecting your channel away from LPs? Hmm, not really. It is kind like I've always said, it's kind of video games. Vidget games have been pretty important to me. And it is a nice medium, a nice familiar medium for me to be working with. Doesn't require too much as, as far as equipment and, and, you know, specialized cameras or lighting. If I, you know, really the only other way you could go is, is, uh, is real life, you know, video production. Uh, whether or not it be the vloggy style stuff or, you know, I, I really do like the... Uh, the uh, the sixty symbols, the the sci show, uh, and now there's a sci show space. The the vlog brothers style video making. Um, the uh, what's the one uh, with uh, Emily Grassel? Um, the brain scoop, which is now at the Field Museum. You know, I, I do kind of like that sort of thing. I'm not sure how or what or if I would be able to. Uh, to, to, to get into that sort of thing. But I do like, I like video production. I like the, in, as far as gaming goes, I do like the podcasty style of gaming videos like this, Far Lands or Bust is, is kind of a an audio podcast almost. So I do like the radio side of things. I, I, I do have a radio, I do have a face for radio. <laughs> so uh, there's that. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I mean, it's crossed my mind and I have... You know, a few years ago, there were a few more IRL Kurt videos, and I've kind of pulled back from that because, you know, I feel like focusing on honing my, my LP, my gaming gameplay video um, content. And there are certainly plenty of, of channels that were gaming, and they've shifted to this. Uh, you know, even if, you, if you're subscribed to Doc, Doc M77, he's doing a lot of cool vlog stuff where he's traveling... 
uh, to, to either games, uh, conventions, or he's been traveling to his, his, uh, where he's partnered with his, he's working with his studio, uh, where he, he goes to, I think it's Berlin, uh, and, uh, does some, some interesting vlogging stuff on the streets, and, and he has a cool personality for that, and he recently for, it is a very funny, like, in the studio, uh, studio production for his April Fool's video. Uh, so, you know, that sort of stuff, I would never discount that. But right now, I am very happy doing what I am doing, and, uh, it would be a pretty, it would, it would be like starting over again, to say, I'm going to do a vlog channel now, or I'm gonna do a science channel, or I'm gonna do, uh, uh, a channel about cars, or, it would be very cool, I, you know, there's Drive, there's all these, like, different car review channels, <laughs> that would be pretty cool. It's almost like a mini, uh, Top Gear or something like that, but, uh, that would require, a, a, it would be starting over, quite literally. Uh, indeed, indeed, Wolfie. So let's go to sleep and start over with a new day in the morning. <laughs> and awakeness. Indeed. Speaking of that, I did uh, yesterday the uh, the New York Auto Show is currently going on, and oh, all right, I guess you're full. And uh, Subaru announced their new Outback. Uh, which is kind of their full-size wagon sports utility vehicle. And uh, they posted a picture. Careful, Wolfie. Hi. <laughs> I like how you stared me in the face while you did that. Well done. He's, he's doing it to spite me now. Um, and I kind of replied to them. I'm like, hey, if you need some sort of obscure internet personality to, to hand one of those to to, to help promote the new Outback, I, uh, my garage is open. And I got so many comments about the garage door opener, that's my neighbors and whatnot in the background of my videos, but, uh, uh, you know, there are, there are some channels, uh, I think, uh, you know, there's the, the Fiesta movement, uh, Ford took it upon themselves to, to partner, I suppose, with a bunch of internet personalities, a lot of them YouTubers or, or otherwise popular people on Twitter or elsewhere gave them Ford Fiestas and, kind of, uh, as part of the arrangement, they have to vlog and, and share their experience with their Ford and, and whatnot. Uh, I, I think the, uh, what's her name? Uh, La Lania? Lania? La the, the overly attached girlfriend or whatever, she's, uh, and that's a cool story. She, you know, she was this meme or whatever, and now she's kind of turned it into, I believe she's a full-time YouTuber, and, you know, she seems cool, she does a lot of stuff for charity, but she also, I think she has a partnership with Kia, where she has like a, she was always talking about her Kia Soul, and uh, and stuff like that. Uh, I I hey, if I would never judge anybody else if if they get into a position where where they can uh, work some sort of of deal like that to get, uh, I suppose a, in in a derogatory way it would be considered selling out, quote unquote, but. By all means, sell out. If you can do it in a way that is ethical, uh, in a way that it's not like, you can only say good things about this product, you know, it's not uh, astroturfing or anything like that. Uh, if you can, you know, like I say, say about like uh, Beast Nodes, uh, I talk about, I, I, it's a product I use, or I, I'm constantly talking about coffee and Intelligentsia coffee, or uh, in, in this case, I'm like, I'm pretty much going to get a Subaru. Uh, if if you can work it where then that that company helps you out, <laughs> in a way, is a little bit of a cyclical way to uh, market their product, then by all means, go for it. I will not judge you, and, and hopefully, if, if I am ever lucky enough <laughs> to, to get such a thing as that, Hope, I hope you will not judge me as well. <laughs> uh, seriously, I'm so ready to sell out. Just give me all your products. Anybody. Oh, Wolfie. Wow. What did you do? What did you do? You noodle. Oh, now we gotta find some pigs. Wolfie's selling out. It's like, I will, I will sell so many t-shirts that say careful Wolfie by taking so much damage. All I need in exchange is a bunch of, a bunch of pork chop bones. <laughs> uh, you sell out. Well done. I'm proud of you. Uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, well, that, that was also another joke recently. The Gavin and the slow mo guys uh, with Rooster Teeth are doing something with uh, Scion. They got the the, uh, the what do they call it? The FRS, I think, is what Scion's version of the the Subaru BRZ I was talking about. Kind of the the two seater little roadster um, type of type of car. 
Uh, they're doing slow-mo videos with Scion, and I, I tweeted back at him after he announced the slow-mo video where they got splashed by, uh, you know, a, a Scion, a roadside puddle in slow motion. I'm like, hey, save some of the uh, amazing product placement deals for, for other YouTubers. And he replied, oh, you're going to hate our next video then. So I'm assuming they're doing more slow-mo videos with the, the Scion uh, drift guy. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, good times. Good times indeed. Woof. Wolfie agrees. Uh, let's look at another question here. Ba, 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 ba. Toothbrush habits. How many times per day? I be I feel like this is this is coming out of the uh, sit or stand kind of debate uh, about uh, people's habits. Uh, I brush my teeth twice a day in the morning after breakfast and in the evening before bed. I think that's pretty standard. I think we can all agree that is a a socially acceptable amount of of teeth brushing. Uh, I floss more than I used to. I used to not floss so much, uh, but I recently, you know, I used to. I have my my gums are very sensitive. Uh, I used to really hate flossing, and I'm sure a lot of people do as well. And it's it's one of those one of those jokes that a comedian can make is like you, you go to the dentist and they always scold you for not flossing. But really, who flosses? Everybody gets scolded at the dentist for not flossing enough. Uh, I, I recently found a particular brand of floss that is for for gentle gentle gum care floss or something like that. Speaking speaking of selling out, I have a I this is oops. There, there's there's no uh, I've gotten no kickbacks from oral B or whoever makes this floss it's like a very it's a very soft it's like woven floss and it actually the, my problem with floss especially the waxed kind is it's like it's piano wire basically you put it on your gums and it's like slice paper cuts in your gums uh, this stuff is very soft so I I, uh, I I I floss my teeth more regularly than I used to perhaps three or four times a week, uh, but still probably not as much as is recommended by the American Dental Association. Uh, so yeah, m evening, evening, and in the morning after, after, especially after coffee. You gotta brush your teeth after coffee or else you're gonna have some serious, uh, some serious teeth stain issues. So, yep, thank you for that donation and, and using your time to, to ask me about my my toothbrush, <laughs> my uh, brush uh, habits, toothbrush habits. I have an electric toothbrush, one of the basic $20 kinds that are just rechargeable. They're pretty good. Boop. Come on, piggy. Oh, all right. I think we're full up on our, our stock of wolfy treats. Um, what is your ideal comfortable temperature range? I was talking about temperatures, about it being like 60 degrees outside, whatever that is, 13, 15 degrees Celsius. Um, comfortable temp range. Also, if you had to pick a temperature extreme to live in, would you rather be hot or cold? From Lavaros. Um, ideal? I do like it to be a little bit on the cool side. But I do prefer warmth to cold, especially after this winter in Chicago. Good gravy. It's horrible. Um, of course, it was mostly the snow, which was annoying about the cold this winter. Um, but yeah, I mean, 60 degrees Fahrenheit is pretty comfortable. I, you know, I do appreciate being able to wear a light jacket simply for the pockets because <laughs> you gotta carry like a cell phone and keys and sunglasses or whatever it's nice to have a place to put all that stuff as a guy without a purse uh it it really is uh is helpful to have a jacket with pockets for these sort of things um and i know before i talked about having the man purse the uh, map case military map case that i i used in packs not finding it to be too useful in day-to-day -day life uh, so, oh well, it was it was a good attempt. It's not a full blown messenger bag, but a small. It's called a map case that they use in the military. I'm trying to, I'm trying to make it a little bit more masculine, <laughs> but no, it was a man purse. Uh, you know, really not useful unless you're going to be carrying a small laptop or an iPad around. Uh, so, so yeah, I do appreciate weather that I can wear a jacket, uh, but I would prefer hot 
to to extreme cold. I do I like for the novelty of it extreme cold. Uh, I, I mentioned before observing astronomy, taking your telescope out when it's like below zero Fahrenheit uh, is kind of cool. Uh, I do own a, for those of you who are aware of extreme temperatures, uh, desert, or I'm not desert, <laughs> that would be a little bit of a misnomer. Uh, Canada Goose makes the Expedition Jacket Parka. I actually have one of those for the sole purpose of observing during the winter time. These are the huge parkas that they issue to those working either in Antarctica for science expeditions or in the Arctic, you know, you could survive, you know, negative 30 and negative 60 wind chills with this jacket. It's very warm and it's got the giant hood and multiple layers of down fill and it's it's totally crazy. And I just like it for the, the, the fact that going out in that extreme cold and spending any time there, you got to put on the big gloves, the face mask, the, uh, the baklava or whatever they call it. Um, the giant moon boots, it, it makes me feel like an astronaut. <laughs> That's kind of the only uh, novelty reason why I would like the cold. But I wouldn't, you know, if I had to choose a climate for which to live my day-to-day -day life, I would prefer the warmth. And that is perhaps... Perhaps, I'm not sure when, like I said, I'm back and forth about whether or not this is new car year, or maybe move to a different to a different geographic location year. It would be nice. I do, as I mentioned, Kitt Peak in Arizona. I do like Arizona, the Southwest, quite quite a lot. Uh, and I know it it gets extremely hot there, you know, into your, you know, 120 degrees on a regular basis. Uh, that would take some getting used to, but I think I would probably prefer it to the, the negative temperatures and the, you know, the six inches of snow every week as we were getting this this past winter uh so yeah Pro you know and it, it, would, it would probably be you know it's just an interesting thing to try something new to try a new uh geographic location to try a new a new climate to live in to see to see how you adapt and whatnot so yeah for 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 novelty's sake cold is very interesting but i prefer i prefer the warmth of our sun of which we are positioned within its Warm embrace, habitable zone. <laughs> Bringing things back to the beginning. It's a nice callback to the beginning of the episode. This is a this is a, a technique, a speaking technique, public speaking technique. But uh, I suppose this is going to be the end of episode 344 of Far Lands or Bust. I do appreciate you following along and all of those questions with your donations to Child's Play Charity. Take a breath, Kurt, and uh, yeah. Clicking that like button always helps spread the word about Far Lands or Bust in my videos. Always helps support. The more support I get from you, the less the less I have to look for corporately selling out to to uh, Subaru or other vehicle, uh, you know, <laughs> sponsors. <laughs> uh, I'm terrible. I apologize. But uh, but anyway, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for support. My name is Kurt. I will see you next time. Shh, <sniffs> <sniffs>